The report on the Silver Dollar City train derailment is finally out. We can look and see what the State Fire Marshal said and what happened. So this last week, the State Fire Marshal finally released their report on the Silver Dollar City train derailment. And of course, the question is, what happened? What caused it? Uh, and so let's talk about this a little bit, because some of it's a little bit interesting. Uh, first off, the whole report is not available yet online. Basically, it looks like Silver Dollar City has gotten a copy, and it looks like local TV station KY3 got a copy. But in four days, I haven't been able to actually find the real report. I've just been finding what other people have said about the report, and most of the sources point back to KY3. So we're going to kind of roll based on what they are reporting is in the report. Because we're going to report what the reporters say about the report. And anyways, <laughs> so let me tell you what has actually been publicly released. And then let's talk about this. Uh, keep in mind, this is coming from the state fire marshal about a train derailment. It's not the National Transportation Board or other agencies that normally deal with trains. And I don't know how often the state fire marshal has, but according to the report from the fire marshal's office um, and also Wolf Railway Consulting, which published some photos with it. So the fire marshal consulted a railway consulting company. Uh, there was uneven wear on a side bearing allowing carriage three to lean. I'm going to come back to that. Uh, springs and trucks were not the same height. Again, this is coming back to car three. There was a misalignment of the rails. Gee. Derailed because the rails... Okay. Um, railroad tie spacing was not consistent. And there were loose joint bolts. Okay, so what a joint bolt is, is when you have two sections of track joining together, you've got a plate that holds those there and you... Uh, essentially spike down both ends of the rail so they are right next to each other. So they line up. So it's saying that those were misaligned. MoDOT officials also report that another possible cause could include track warp where the train car derailed. In other words, something happened to cause that track to change position. So basically what they are saying is uh, the springs on car three weren't quite lined up. So car three tilted a little bit. OK, um, and then what they said was, oh, and the rails weren't lined up. They weren't necessarily the same gauge. Um, so the recommendations here are, are very interesting. They gave the following recommendations. Again, fire marshal develop track safety standards for a two foot narrow gauge G.A.G.E. track as there are no standards. Uh, that's actually incorrect. The standard is two feet apart and there are standards for two gauge for two foot gauge track. Um, so the recommendation right off the bat isn't quite accurate, which has me going, all right, what's happening there? Uh, to, by the way, the safety standards for a two foot gauge track are the same as any other railroad track, <laughs> except you make sure it's two foot gauge, uh, install ties at consistent spacing, um, measure side bearing at set intervals. That's the springs correct and monitor the correct alignment of rails. Because, you know, the rails obviously weren't correctly aligned before, and that's why the train derailed so often. Ensure and monitor joint bolts for tightness. They did that already on a daily basis. Um, I watched them tighten those things. So, um, and then ensure weight is evenly distributed during passenger loading. Because in 60 years, they've had all those times when the weight was unevenly distributed and caused the train to tilt. <sighs> Basically, what the fire marshal's recommendations are saying is fix the springs, make sure the passengers are evenly distributed, which was done already. Are they going to weigh the passengers at the station? Yeah, hey, sorry, sir, you're a little too big to sit on that side of the train. You need to move to the other one. Um, that's not an issue. Never has been. At any park railroad. So the springs, I'm, I'm just like, dude... Okay, maybe you had a slightly worse worn spring. That happens as part of the regular maintenance. Uh, it's the end of the season. 
And the spring isn't what caused the derailment, which they basically then go on to say every other recommendation outside of the springs and the weight distribution, which is a goofy thing, are all about the track. Well, we know that the track wasn't lined up because that's why a train derails, is when the track comes out of alignment and then the train will jump the rail. And you can actually see the spot uh, with one of the pictures where it misaligned and jumped off the rail. That's what a derailment is. Okay, so we know that the tracks were misaligned, warped. What caused it? It ran multiple times that day. Why were those all okay and not this one? It shifted somewhere over the course of the day. What caused the shift? Maybe the ties not being aligned, but then again, 60 years. And all of a sudden, something else happened here that the fire marshal's report isn't getting. It's kind of frustrating. Uh, one, okay, right off the bat, the credibility question. I don't know if this is a TV reporter's typo or if it's actually the fire marshal's report, but immediately when they say, uh, design track safety standards for a two foot narrow gauge, G-A-G-E. The word is gauge, G-A-U-G-E. All right, um, who's doing the misspelling here? And uh, what does that do for your credibility? Because if you can't spell gauge right, uh, the fire marshal also is not a train company. So that's why they, they consulted out with the wolf consulting um it just leaves holes and i'm going where is the rest of the information it may or may not actually be in the report but a slightly worn or misaligned spring is not going to cause a derailment it's not going to cause that car to tip over weight distribution is not going to cause that car to tip over railroad cars are sturdier than that especially these so those are not a cause spring contributed maybe um and that could have been an issue but that's not what caused this derailment the tr something happened with the track and they allude to that when they say the tracks the, the tracks weren't aligned well yeah um and then they point to a joint bolt that's loose and they actually have a picture where the track is slid off of the spikes that hold it in place um and you're kind of going okay but they were in place in the morning because that's what they check on the daily walk and inspection. What pushed it out of place? Was that actually during the derailment or was it not? What caused the shift? Um, what caused the misalignment? I don't know. And I'm looking, there's already people going, oh, it's 100% Silver Dollar City maintenance. No, not necessarily because we still don't know the cause. We know... Where it started, it started with a track that became misaligned and the car jumped. And then, of course, as it jumped, instead of staying upright, because you'll have a lot of times trains will actually derail and they will stay completely upright. So what happened more than likely when this one jumped the track because it was misaligned, uh, at that point, that's where the spring kind of kicked in and caused car three to start to tilt and that took it over. But... That wouldn't have happened if it hadn't jumped from a misaligned or warped track. What caused that? That we don't know. We just know it was at that point, but it hadn't been over multiple runs earlier that day. Um, so my frustration with this report is it's not complete, at least not what's being reported. Um, and the one thing about news reporters is they are very selective. They have to keep it short, concise, you know, in, fit into a 15 or 30 second spot. And so there's crucial crucial information that hasn't been released here. And that's kind of where I'm going, where's the rest of the info? What is the ultimate root cause? Um, I know I threw out a speculation about the weather and being super dry and then raining and that caused the track to shift. Uh, at this point, I haven't seen any mention of the weather. I don't know if I'm right or not, but at least I'm pointing to what could have caused the shift in the rails, and they don't talk about that. Uh, they just mention the plates being misaligned. And like I said, I, I don't know. Um, in any case, Silver Dollar City Train is running. It's been operating for a few days now under the new guidelines. In fact, Silver Dollar City actually released a statement 
that says, we have implemented several ch implemented several changes to modernize safety and procedural standards for the train. All these changes have been reviewed by the Missouri State Fire Marshal's office, which has since released the train for operation. But they could change. They were already doing anyways. Uh, yeah. So at this point, uh, the report's missing crucial information, at least what they've released to the public. Uh, a couple of the things are definitely like, uh, what? Huh? Really? Um, in my opinion, we still don't know what caused the misalignment of the rails. And that kind of takes this and goes, still waiting for more info. Um, hope it eventually comes out. Uh, I'm still thinking of something else. But that's kind of an update. That's my take on the fire marshal's report on the derailment. Uh, and hopefully we'll have more information later. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what you think. Uh, am I completely missing something that's blatantly obvious in front of me? Um or what? I, I would love to know. Share it in the comments below. Thank you so much to my patrons and my YouTube members for their financial support. Uh, I'm able to do so much thanks to them. And thank you so incredibly much for watching. God bless. Hello, puppy. <laughs>I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts, your comments, your suggestions, your ideas. Be sure to share them in the comments below, or you can contact me. There's information in the description that has my email address, fan pages, information about merchandise, and so much more. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to hit that like button, share the video, and if you haven't already, hit the button right up there to subscribe. And in fact, if you did enjoy this, I've even got another video for you right here. And also about these wonderful people here, those are my YouTube members and my patrons, the ones whose financial support makes this possible. I couldn't do it without them. If you want to know more about that and the perks that come with it, well, be sure to check the description. There's a link right down there. Thank you so incredibly much. God bless.